Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wholeness Wisdom Well. I am your host, Lizette Morais, and this podcast is intending to bring sacred wisdom to support you to step into your sovereignty and your sacred service. And in this beautiful episode, I'm so thrilled to welcome my guest, Valerie White. Hello, Valerie, and welcome. Well, hello. <laughs> Valerie joins us from the UK. Um, Oh, and it is such a pleasure to have you on this podcast, and I'm so looking forward to diving into alternative well health and wellness. Um, I'm going to read your bio just so our listeners can uh, situate your story, which is so um, so beautiful. So you worked in healthcare first year as a nurse within the UK NHS, then studied so many different health and wellness modalities. Um, you absolutely feel that this is your purpose to serve, and I couldn't agree more. Um, Valerie says, I know now without any shadow of a doubt that health and well-being must be addressed at a cellular level. We are not a we are not only a body with a mind and a soul, we are not a mind with a body. Um, and a soul. So we are just whole and we should be treated and respected as such. And I couldn't agree more. This is a new paradigm, a new way. Let's work together as one in wholeness and understanding. So welcome, Valerie. Thank you. Great to be here. So you have been on a path, of course, your whole life, always knowing that you wanted to help people. Can you briefly kind of give us a synopsis of what you actually do now for people when it comes to supporting them to experience their optimal health and well-being okay the people that i tend to work with are mainly women and what i found is these women are mainly driven women with a purpose and they are wanting to serve in some way and they get to the point where they're giving 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 and they forget about themselves right oh so i found that these are my people the people that are coming now that are thinking mm, perhaps i can have a look at something different because so many times these people have been to see their doctor and the doctor keeps saying it's your age slow down you know it's stress know, it's stress mm -hmm. and giving some antidepressants yes of course this is not what people want these days right they don't want to depress things they want to be alive of course and and here's and here's the amazing thing is very often their bodies don't actually they, their bodies aren't actually sick but they can feel that they're not completely healthy so tell us a little bit about the scan that you use and um and how you detect exactly what's kind of wrong so we can address that from a cellular level as you so beautifully say well the scan is so simple we used to have um, a hand scanner with Ness Health, which you would purchase, and it was like a big mouse you put your hand on, and it would run through the software and scan all the energy systems of your body, which through all the research over the past 10 or 12 years or so, all be matched out to specific frequencies within the body that's optimal. Um, and lockdown brought about... Um, a faster movement of what they were working at at the time was the voice scan. Mm -hmm. So now you don't need to buy the hand scanner. You can do it all with your phone or your tablet or your computer by mm -hmm. simply speaking. And the scan will pick up the energetic system, which is unique to you. And it reads over 440 odd points in the body matching them energetically and the scan will now show where your body is blocked or where it's needing support or where it's out of alignment so oh, then on, you know what the body needs so NES health because you are a certified NES health practitioner NES is uh, for those that don't know can you describe the organization the the scientific background and the history of this organization and why you chose to connect and certify yourself with them? Yeah. 
Um, the company and NES or NES Health um, was founded, I believe, in 2004. And it was a chap called Harry Massey who was in his early 20s, 21, I believe, just started his university and he became sick. Um, and he just was not getting well, no matter what he did. He'd been to so many doctors and alternatives, been down every route he could find and nobody was giving him any help. So he was doing his university much of the time from his bed mm. and he was bedridden for over seven years. So, you know, we can only imagine what a life of a 21 year old from 21, you know, and he was doing research and more research and obviously he's a very highly educated guy. And it was his desire to, because he had so much stress trying to find practitioners to work with, it was so traumatic because he just had zero energy um, and he was trying to push himself, but he didn't know at the time that that's the wrong thing to do. If your energy is so depleted, then pushing is just using up what little reserves you've got and, you know, you're okay. at the forward. So within his um, search for the answer, he met a guy called Peter Fraser, who's Australian. And he, I think he was the first acupuncturist and he did traditional Chinese medicine, but he was Australian. First one in Australia, I think, to do acupuncture. Um, and he was doing all the, the testing of what are the meridians? What is this channel that we can't see, feel, touch that doesn't show up on any x-ray? And yet it's working. So right. I think that this was his journey, Peter Fraser, and he started matching and he found that it was just an energetic flow. So he did all this research over the years and he was quite well on with this matching programs when he met Harry, Harry Massey, who became his guinea pig in effect. Mm -hmm. And Harry was getting better by the day. They met, I think, in America, um, must have been 2003, 2004, and they decided to go together because Harry has done, I think, mainly um, the technology side. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they, they programmed all of the matching that Peter did and since they knew between them that water can hold a memory, it started off a journey of, okay, if we can imprint the water with the right frequency that's specific to the matching that Peter had done, then people drink this water, that frequency is going to be recognized by the cells to bring those cells to optimum health. And, and that, he was born the infraceutical. That was the infraceuticals, yes. Yeah. So that is the remedies that Ness Health offer. Right. And simply, you put drops into water and you drink it. Right. So it's water that's got mineral salts added to it that's been through this um, imprinting process, which is so many volts of whatever. I don't understand how they do. I've seen it. It just goes through this machine, but I don't understand technically how it works, but it does work. We've and this is the beauty. We don't really need to know. What we need to know, though, is that it's based in, 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 of course, in scientific proof. And it's also what I found so incredible is that this is the result of this collaboration between these two men, bringing their two geniuses together of, you know, having this energy block and then the meridian system, which, which I, I find is so beautiful because I, we totally believe that the body regenerates itself. However, if I'm energetically blocked and we know that energy or the etheric body that we live in, the energetic body, is, is actually resulting in our physical body because we have multiple bodies, <laughs> right? Uh, as we know in wholeness. And a lot of wholeness is about integrating the mental body, the emotional body, the etheric body, the soul body, right? And bringing that all into. And what I so find fascinating is we can, we can have the science, we can have the technology, and we can access that direct diagnosis through one scan of 10 seconds just speaking. And of course, I mean, it's, it blows your freaking mind. <laughs> it just blows your mind. And that's what, when we, when we talked, um, you actually, we met because you came to me 
um, to work on a program, a six week journey, I believe it was, of the Women Leaders of Rights when I first launched. Uh, so we connected and we've stayed connected ever since that journey because I could honestly see that um, I had so much to understand from your beautiful modality in medicine as you were learning uh, my modality in medicine of wholeness. And what a perfect match that was. Before we dive into how we collaborate, I would love to ask, because you have been up being, you are an NAS uh, certified practitioner for, for, few, for many years now, working with one-on-ones, but there was a whole history of you being a nurse first. So can you tell us a little bit about the story of why you wanted to go into nursing in the first place and why did you get out of it? Okay, when I was very young, um, it was discovered that I had middle ear problems. And this was discovered when I started school and I went for a school medical and, you know, was discovered this child has hearing difficulties. I didn't know what hearing was at that time. I'm five year old, you know, I didn't know if I was hearing or I wasn't hearing. I just knew what I was hearing. But anyway, off we go to the doctors and the doctor sends us to the hospital and the hospital do all sorts of tests and things. And I end up having to go for surgery. And this happened many times in my young life. I was in and out of hospital for middle ear surgery. And at that time, there was a lot of stress in my home. There was little money and I came from a, a biggish family. I had siblings and my mom was so stressed. You know, there was just so much going on. So my home life wasn't particularly Support yeah. love from my mum of course you know I'm so close to my mum she's always been there for me but she wasn't really able to at that point of course so going into hospital where a lot of people fear going into hospital I put the flags out when it was day to go into hospital because there the nurses oh my word they were so loving mm -hmm. so caring Pain didn't bother me too much. You know, I had a high pain threshold, so I could go through all of that nice. just to have the love and the care and the cuddles and the, the time spent. With and I'm so glad, by the way, that the nurses did treat you like that, because I know many people have different experiences with nurses, but you being your adorable self, they loved you up. And that's wonderful. So then you thought from that experience, this is what I want to be? From age about seven year old, yeah. Okay. So we're going back the odd years on my dad you know when nursing in those days was so different yes it was it was so different and I decided that's what I'm going to do so having ear problems I didn't thrive at school I hated school every second of school I hated because like I say going back 40 50 years now to my school days the teachers were strict mm. they were hard mm -hmm. And I didn't like being spoken to like that and shouted at. And my mom repeatedly went to the school and said, I, I need to be sat at the front because I didn't hear. And in those days, hearing aids weren't that easy to come by. And I didn't want one of those. I didn't want to be different. I just wanted to hide away. I was so little introverted and mean. I didn't want to be at the front of the class and be exposed. I would, whenever I got the opportunity, go to the back. So you can imagine how much schooling I got. Mm -hmm. Zero. So I left school. And then I came to school leaving and I thought, yeah, yeah, I'm leaving. I'm going to be a nurse. It's going to be great. I was so excited. And then we had the careers lady came in, you know, and right, Valerie, what, what, what would you like to do then? And I said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a nurse. Uh -uh, I don't think that's going to be possible for you. My whole world just fell apart at those words. What, what do you mean? She says, well, you need qualifications and you don't have the qualifications <gasps> now you tell me I need qualifications now no they're just nurses they just love people they just help people what do you need qualifications for <laughs> so I was guided into office work little did I know that that was going to stand me in great stead further down the line when I came to work for myself and run my own business that yeah so yeah. I think this universe just has a bigger plan. In it just opinion. does have a bigger plan, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. We're not going into nursing yet because nursing is not going to suit you long term. 
Right. We're going to get a chance, but not yet. We need to just give you something for the future. So I was kind of, yeah. And I didn't really enjoy it, but I did it and I worked on it and it was kind of all right, but my heart was still pulled back to this nursing thing. And I applied and I was turned down and I applied again and I was turned down and I applied again, different hospitals, different systems. And I was kind of taken on trust. Um, well, you know, you've got this and you've got that and you've got that because I'd been back to full-time education sure. to get some qualifications so that I could apply so you I did this give up on your dream, huh? oh mm -hmm. yeah you know I really was if you need qualifications that's what I've got to do then yes so you know I went to the hospital and I said I need to be able to hear better so they give me hearing aid yep that was good bit of a process because you know it was so much noise that I hadn't heard I went yes. to that after that was fine Went back to school and got the qualifications I needed, applied third time. Okay, um, I ticked all the boxes in the interview. Um, it says, right, okay, we need you to go to the sewing room and be fitted for your nurse's dress. You're going to start in two months' time. I was so excited. But then go and have some lunch and come back and see the doctor for your medical. Uh-uh. Going to look at my ears. Uh-oh. All right. OK, so I, I couldn't beat. I was so excited. I'd been to the, to the sewing room and, you know, they put the pin in my dress where the hemline needed to be and everything. And I'd have this dress on and I was, it was my dream. However, I kind of wandered around this place and thought, right, OK, it's time for them to go now to see the doctor. So I sat in the doctor's office and he did all the tests, the blood pressure and, you know, and he looked in my throat and said, oh, and all the rest of it and prodded and poked where he needed to poke. And then came out the thing. OK, we we'll look in your ears. <gasps> and he looked in one ear and he said, oh, this is my good ear, by the way. Looked at this and he says, oh, that's mm, OK. Turn around, looked in the bad ear. Oh, that's a bit of a patchwork quilt. I had so much surgery in the ears. Yes. And then he says, yeah, he says, well, everything's fine. But can you hear through a stethoscope? And bearing in mind that we didn't have the electronics, this is going back to early 80s. Yeah. So we had to have a stethoscope and the, the pump thing to blow the cuff up and watch the mercury go down when we're taking blood pressures. So I needed to hear through a stethoscope. And this is the question he's saying to me, can you hear through a stethoscope? And I said, well, I don't know. And I'm thinking, I doubt it because I can't wear my hearing aid. Anyway, he says, well, let's have a try. So he put the stethoscope and he put it on his own heart. Can you hear my heartbeat? And I had to be honest. I said, no, I can't. And I thought, this is my dream. This is it. Can we take it away from me? It's my dream. It's gone. I can't hear his heartbeat. I can't use a stethoscope. How can I be a nurse? I'm so he could see that my whole persona just dropped. And then he took a big sigh and he said, but there may be an option. An option? What? He says, well, we do have an electronic stethoscope that we might be able to lend you. <gasps> and I don't know how at that point I didn't just jump up and kiss him. I was so tempted to jump up and kiss him. So that was the beginning of my nursing journey. How long were you a nurse for? I was a nurse for 15 years. Wow. Well, I did the training and I went from the department, you know, and did several things. And I ended up in theatre. I was working in maxillofacial, which is the maxillators up here, and all facial surgery. I did oral surgery. We did um, head and neck cancers and all sorts of things. Incredible. Quite, you know, invasive surgery. But working in theatre with all the cuts at that time, we're now going to the 90s. Mm -hmm. And there's so many cuts that um, as a scrub nurse, I knew all my instrumentation. I knew exactly what I was doing. I was handling instruments and, you know, working in theatre with all this major surgery. And there was the surgeon doing the operation and he had an assistant, which was a junior doctor that would hold the suction and retraction. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was handling the instruments. But then with the cuts, the junior doctor was taken away. Mm -hmm. Scrub nurse now had to hold the suction and retraction. So now I can't handle the instruments. So now the consultant is just helping himself off the tray. 
And now the surgery is finished and I'm still holding the suction and retraction because the anaesthetist takes over to extubate and you know wake the patient up and I'm stuck and I can't count the instruments on the tray and I can't check that tray. Mm. So they're taking the tray away and I'm thinking, no, this is wrong. This is dangerous. Mm -hmm. I need to check that tray. Oh, Valerie, come on, man, just get on with it. There's another patient waiting to come in. And I couldn't, I couldn't stand it. The cleaning wasn't being done to the standard that I knew it should be done. There was too many cuts. And I would come out and cry every day. We were being held up. We were working overtime. I would hardly get a lunch break because of the cuts. If we just work through lunch, you know, we might get off on time. That was the thing. So this is so this is for the people that are listening and thinking, why are we, why are we going into this level of detail? I think what you're sharing here is so important. And what I'm hearing is those tears you were crying outside of the surgery is because you knew you had a call to help people. You knew in which way you fought your whole life to get there. You got in. And now after all this time, you're noticing because of financial cuts, people are not getting the level of care right. that you actually know in integrity is needed. It so this really shifted something for you, right? It was dangerous. I felt right. that you know, my neck's on the block here. There's nobody going to stand up and say, well, she physically couldn't check the instruments. When right, exactly, exactly. And but you were, not gonna, you were not going to take that fall. It was so <laughs> wrong. I had to get out. Yeah, so, so you did get out. I did get out. And following that, I went into my creative side and um, I was teaching and demonstrating cake decorating and sugar craft and making lovely little sugar flowers and things and doing all the sugar flowers for wedding cake, corporate cakes. Um, my husband and I designed a set of cake finishing tools, which was selling worldwide, which is why I needed the office work to start with, you know, the administration, know how to run this business. Um, and it was amazing, you know, I was just doing such lovely things, but I was doing too many aspects, teaching, demonstrating, exhibiting, you know, doing just so much, doing all the wedding cakes and, you know, supporting brides and, and I became burned out. So I realize now this is another part of the universe's grand plan to make me understand what it feels like to give and give and to do. And even though it's your passion, you can easily become so depleted and burned out because I wasn't looking after me. Yes. And it's not only just not looking after you. It's so many times we get pulled in these multiple directions where we have to put on the different hats for the different faces and the different pieces. And we totally miss the I am, which is so, you know, we, we feel like our energy is totally divided and therefore we get depleted. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. So leading to the burnout. So, so I know what that feels like. Absolutely. Having understanding how that feels. Um, then my husband became sick and a few years down the line, eventually I lost him to cancer. And I wasn't educated. I didn't know myself. I was still doing the business, the cake decorating, selling the, the tools that we've done. I'd written a book on how to use these tools, which is selling all over the world. You know, the business was just far too heavy for one pair of hands to do every aspect. Of it. So I decided when my husband went, it's not about the money. I had plenty of money at that stage. Just pass this business on to my niece who had an autistic son and she wanted to work from home. Mm -hmm. So the whole business, everything that I had went to her. So that business is still thriving. She's not doing cakes and things. She's just selling the, the tools. The instrument, the exactly. Yeah, which is yeah. great for her. So she's making money out of that. And I was free because I thought, well, it's going to survive now. It won't survive if I keep it because I haven't got the strength. I was running down in strength as my husband became ill and he was becoming more dependent. We had more hospital visits, you know, and more, there was just more care needed. So it was really, it really took its toll. So when I lost him, I had a year of falling apart and not knowing what to do with myself. I'd given up doing the cakes and I'd given up the teaching and demonstrating and I was doing nothing. It wasn't about the money. I had the money. That's, that doesn't always bring the happiness because mm -hmm. my husband was now gone and I had a totally different lifestyle. But then a friend had told me about bioresonance, which is frequencies using mats and pads and things with a machine. And I did some training on that, but I was finding the testing difficult. Then it was all up to me to decide what programs to use. And I was struggling 
with testing, with knowing what programs to use. Test methods were not good for me. And then for some reason came into my view um, on social media, I think, Nest Health and the scanning system. And I thought, well, that's the yes. answer that I've been looking for. I didn't go search. I didn't know anything about this. Yeah. But the universe says, this is what you need. You're struggling to test. You're struggling to know what to do. Then there's your answer. But you knew energy, energetics, and, and the monitoring and diagnosis of that was actually the key to health. Yeah. Right. So you know, it was I, I didn't understand how to find out what's wrong with you. Yes. I've got to test what's wrong with you. And I'm struggling to understand. I didn't know the questions to ask. I didn't know how to test that. And so that was when I struggle with bioresonance. Mm -hmm. I was doing it and I was working with it, but I wasn't confident. And the missing piece was something to tell me what's going on in your body. Where is your body needing the support? Exactly. And then that diagnostic. The and there's the bottle as well to go with it. You know, it was a no-brainer for me to get into Ness Health. And it's as, been as well as yeah. brilliant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a it's an incredible, it's an incredible um tool. And you know, I always think our health and wellness practitioners. I mean, you have a you have a whole from from your entire journey. It's like you've been equipped step by step to know how to get yourself and how to help other people get into optimal health, get into their their bodies. And now you actually have the scan at your disposal to identify where it is and have the tools to help. But also, like how to fall asleep if you're struggling with that, and all these kind of things. Um, what I find so incredible, Han, is when I was, um, when I heard about this and you said, take a scan, because that was the thing, you know, it's like, I want to get to know this, I had to take a scan. So I did. And we noticed an incredible, a lot of blocks in my system, because uh, I was going through an in intensely emotional time. Mm -hmm. And, um, and as my kind of world fell apart at that point, what was so amazing is that we've tracked my progress with scans and with my own work. And we started thinking and was being born about working together. Just to give people a background, why were you, um, how should I put this question? How did you connect with me? And what is that connection about for you? Yeah. I had come to a point in my life where this was such a difficult thing for me to explain to people because it was new. Although I loved it and I was passionate about it, you can't tell people in just a few words, it's energy. Oh yeah, yeah, woo woo stuff. We all are made, we're, we're all energy. And if we get blockages and things, then it impacts different parts of the body if, if the cells are not getting the information because of a block in the energy and I struggled and no matter how I tried and I've tried for years I was getting clients but odd one I, you know it just wasn't happening for me mm -hmm. so I got to the point where I thought you know perhaps this is not for me I'll just use this for my own benefit and for the benefit of my family and anybody that wants to come along because I'm not doing any more marketing because I can't I'm, it's marketing is not me selling myself and pushing myself and I'm just getting resistance from people it's not me I'm out I've given up I've given up and then a friend of ours mutual friend of ours Eva Andrea was um, doing a, a soul sisters meeting mm. And she says, yeah, just, you know, grab yourself a cuppa and come along one evening and let's just get together. I thought, wow, that sounds nice. Yeah. Okay, Evandre. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> so I connected that day and Evandre was lovely. And she introduced Lizette. And I'd never met Lizette. Mm -hmm. Fine. We're just hanging out with your soul sisters together. And Lizette did this meditation, which just made me go, whoa. <laughs> I need to work with you, Lizette. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but you know, you talk about these different bodies, and our bodies just. <laughs> yes. There was resonance. <laughs> the, 
was absolute Velcro. You were one and I was the other. And, and I was, I'm not going to let go. But I had decided I've given up. I'm not doing any more. Right. It's about surrender, which I, is another thing that I experienced really, really deeply at that point. Because I wasn't doing any more. I'd paid for so many courses and tried the marketing and been on, on retreats and done everything necessary to try and get my message out. And my yeah. message wasn't resonating at all. Mm -hmm. And then Lizette comes along and she says, okay, the first 10 people to sign up, get a free one-on-one -on -one with me. And I thought, what is it? How much, what? Yeah, I'm not, like I say, money wasn't really an object, but I'm not paying anymore. I've paid millions. I'm not, I'm just not doing any more courses. Where's my, where's my credit card? Wait, I'm not doing <laughs> any more courses. And they're, and they're in my bag and I'm, but I'm not doing any more courses. You so you were work. really drawn. You were really oh, drawn. Yes. I couldn't get out of it. Right. I literally couldn't. And I'm telling my, myself, my, my mind is saying I'm not doing any more. You are. Yes, you are. You get, and I've done this before I even realized right. there is something in energy. And it's yes. not just about our body's energy, which yes. is so important, but it's the energy around us that guide us in the right direction. Mm -hmm. okay. And just and just to be clear, it's not it's not everybody that because um, this this wasn't this wasn't about hypnosis. This wasn't about a great sales pitch. This was me showing up in my sacred service, in my sovereign self, serving you and your resonance connected with my resonance and say, I need to work with this person. And we've been in each other's lives now for the last year. Yeah. Um, and, and it hasn't been really, I mean, we, we work together, but it's been more of a friendship yes. and, and walking together on the path. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then of course, me giving you uh, my work of wholeness and supporting you. How has that served you? How's that worked for you, hun? Look where I am now. <laughs> I feel so free because we need that. The, the energetic work that you do, the mm -hmm. mind work, the, the, the soul work, the meditations, the peacefulness, the clearing your mind, the understanding who you are at a deep, deep level. Yeah. I needed that. Sure. I didn't know I needed it. But I feel so much more grounded and right. so much more free to speak my truth. I can speak about Ness Health now in a way that I never could before. It wasn't resonating because I was coming from here. Well, you really, you know, if you just knew what I knew, you would get it yeah. now. You know what? If you want it, it's here. <laughs> right. And I'm, and I'm clear. So, so many of us, because there's many entrepreneurs, um, creative souls, healers, you know, um, people that have their modality, that have their healing, that have their medicine, um, that have their genius, but somehow it's not working. And that's when we came together thinking about the Woman Leaders Collective. So I just want to jump into that for a little bit uh, without when and we'll end with this because what is so powerful about your work and my work coming together is when I started understanding what we actually need is not a course what we need is a collective we need a community understanding that all of us have a very sacred service in the world we have always known it so like even when you were five you knew you wanted to care for people Okay, now that is a very special thing. And then we go through all of our journeys of the ups and the downs and the heartbreaks and the disappointment constantly, not feeling like we're good enough or hitting the wall or getting frustrated. And, but we, we still feel this call. Now, for all of those that are feeling the call now, more than ever before, we need to step into what our heart is calling us but we don't need another course to develop ourselves because the truth is the genius within you is within you. It, it doesn't need to be developed. What it needs, it needs the safety, the power, the potency to be supported and held so that it can flow. <laughs> so I thought, okay, this is what wholeness is. This is when we are building our wholeness and we are integrating our heart's wisdom into everyday life, right? And this is a journey and we are all on the journey and there's no one that is here saying, 
oh, I'm they. No, there's the partners that I have called, the masters I've called, of which you are one. There are 12 of you. Um, what you are is simply a few steps ahead in identifying, specializing, and mastering your modality, your medicine, your mastery. But the invitation is to all that will join this collective is that they start honing into their medicine, modality, and mastery. Because we all have it. And uh, I love this because we get to create a community of equals. We get to create a collaboration of great potency and power and of freedom to be ourselves at any level. And there's some very spiritual people that come, come to very intellectual people. The truth is the work on ourselves is still the work. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of like an overview of what the container is going to be, the way you and I are going to work together. Is quite exciting um, because we I saw Han working with your scans and you saw me working with your scans that I went through a big initiation in May had to walk away what seemed like I had to walk away from everything that I loved went through a dark night but I've been scanning myself for the last six months mm -hmm. and in those six months we could track exactly how much had shifted energetically through the healing work I do or through the shamanic work that I do. And we could see the results in the scans. So what's very powerful about you and me is that while I have a healing modality, your scans and your wisdom on the health and wellness, realizing that everything we're doing on this level is affecting the physical body. Now together, we can actually monitor. Yes. We can actually track. We can actually understand where we are on the hero's journey. We can understand what is that little niggling in the liver that's bothering me and knowing, oh, it has to do with deep regret. Okay, so what is the regret we need to clear? And that's the power I see that is unprecedented. There is nothing like this, Lizette. I know. And I am so excited, not just for us to know, but to serve this entire collective. There is so, nothing like this mm -hmm. that's got so much from different aspects of your life coming together to look at people as a whole. Yes, it is all about wholeness, the whole being. Wholeness, yes. And getting that wholeness that is within you online, stable yes. and prospering, right? So everyone in the program, everyone that's going to sign up for uh, this monthly journey, um, because it will run for a year, but anyone can join at any time and they can also step off at any time, which I don't think they will, but. They are free to, which is beautiful because I didn't feel I had to hold anything. It really is based on freedom. Uh, so when people join us, they are going to be taking one of your scans and they're going to be meeting Valerie. So this is why I find it such an important interview that you be introduced, uh, that your genius, your medicine modality be uh, shown because you're going to get to, as a partner with me, speak to every single person that joins this collective. Um, and have their scan and check where is the blockages in their system because uh, we all have blockages. I mean, there is not one time that I have done a scan that there's no blockages, um, but at least we know where to focus now. We, you know, often we, we hear in the community of, of spiritual development or development or personal development, go do the work, but we don't know where the work is and the body is a master at telling you exactly where the work is, but we haven't had a translator which I feel is what you are. Would you agree to that? Absolutely, yeah. And now more than ever, I think that the work here, we've been kind of guided. I know that I was pushed to work with you. Mm -hmm. So I felt it so, so strongly. And I think that the universe has this plan. It knows who it needs and it's putting people in place. Yes, it's cool. Now, I think more than ever, look at the state the world is in. Mm -hmm. Oh, my word. And there's so much goodness out there. Yes, there and is. So much goodness being blocked and held back. 
Yes. And the world is becoming toxic. We need to get rid of this and we need to open people up and get rid of all of the, the blockages and support what is needed in the people that are going to show up that mm. do want to move forward. And there's, there are many that are creating a new reality. And what I hope this collective is going to, to give us is, um, is really uh, the guidance of not, this is what the, the picture of the new human needs to be, but indeed the tools to be able to access your own wisdom, your own soul's knowing, your own calling, and all the support you need to feel safe to go and do that, which you are called to, and the hope and the coaching and, and whatever you need. And, and that's what's beautiful about the 12 masters is all of you are masters that have helped me personally on my journey, uh, which I have the absolute trust and know you're the real deal. And so you're the only people I would trust with my clients and my uh, the people that I'm guiding. So it is such an honor to work with you, Valerie. You are uh, just such a good friend to me um, and such a loving presence in my life. And I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful with the setup to connect. And I am so grateful that you will be connecting with everyone that says yes to the Woman Leader Rise journey. So if uh, just to round this up, Han, if you want to share anything with anyone who's listening, what would you tell them right now? You are whole. You are not a body with a mind. You are not a mind with a body. If you've got anything that you feel blocked with, then take a scan. Let's look at it. Right. Just open it up energetically so you can see where the blockages are. Right. Because if we go to the doctors, you know, we're feeling fatigued and who doesn't these days? And you know yourself there's something not right. And yet the doctor will take some blood perhaps and he'll come back and he'll say, well, everything looks normal. But yeah. what's normal for you is not normal for someone else. We are right. individuals. We exactly. Are individuals. But this system is working with your energy. And yeah, we can move forward. We can get your health and, and your strength and your energies back up again. We can yeah. give you that vibrancy and that drive between, between us. <laughs> this is just us two. And we know that we can do it. But then with another 10 on the <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh. I know. What I know. And all of us are on board and all of us are going to be bringing a very different lens.